The following program is brought to you by friends and partners of End Time Headlines. Tonight, uh, I want to be dealing with a particular subject called When You See This Happening Again, Watch for the Redeemer to make his appearance soon. When you begin to see this happening again, I want to show you a pattern that played out in the Old Testament. It began in the Old Testament all the way back uh, in the book of Exodus, and it played out again in the New Testament, and I believe um, it has been going on for uh, decades now, but I believe it's going to increase on a greater level before the appearance of or the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's get into this thing, guys. Uh, let's go to the book of Exodus chapter 1. Exodus chapter 1 is where I'm going to start here. And uh, I believe when I get through this and get into the New Testament, you're going to kind of pick up where I'm going with this. Uh, this won't be a long broadcast tonight, probably about 15 or 20 minutes, but I believe it's going to be a powerful, uh, some powerful insight that I believe needs to be uh, addressed. Again, this is Exodus chapter 1. It says, now there arose a new king over Egypt who did not know Joseph. Some translations say, who did not know the God of Joseph. And he said unto his people, look, the people, the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with Israel. Let us come uh, deal shrewdly with them. Let, lest they multiply and it happen in the event of war that they also join our enemies and fight against us and so go up out of the land. Therefore, they set taskmasters, taskmasters over them to afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh supply cities, Pitom and Ramesses. So again, here we see a, there is a new sheriff in town if you would a new pharaoh has risen into power over the land of egypt who did not know joseph nor the god of joseph he dealt the bible says he dealt he dealt shrewdly with the children of israel because his mentality was that he saw that they were growing strong and they were growing mighty and they were growing in number so in consequence of that Pharaoh decided that he would put taskmasters over them, afflict them with hard punishment, labor, and burden, and afflict them so that they would there would be no risk of them growing strong and conquering Egypt. So in verse 12, listen to this. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were in dread of the children of Israel. So the Egyptians made the children of Israel serve with rigor. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar and brick and all manner of service in the field. All their service in which they made them serve was with rigor. And then the king of Egypt spoke to the Hebrew midwives of whom the name of one was Sephara and the name of the other Pua. And he said, quote, when you do the duties of a midwife for the Hebrew women and see them on the birth stools, listen to this, quote, if it is a son, then you shall kill him. But if it is a daughter, then she shall live. But the midwives feared God and did not do as the king of Egypt commanded him, but saved the male children alive. So the, the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, why have you done this thing and saved the male children alive? Again, I want to show you this. Pharaoh made a decree across the land of Egypt to begin to kill the male children. So uh, I want to want to point out an interesting timeline here. What was happening here, what consequently enough, bef while this decree was being made, all the while God in the same time period was raising up, he had already planned. The Bible says for 400 years, the children of Israel was into captivity. They cried out night and day before the Lord that they may be free from their captivity, may be free from their bondage, may be free from their labor. And the Bible says that at an appointed time, 
God heard their cries and raised up a redeemer for them. And it was Moses. But we know, again, there was a space of time. Moses had to go on the backside of the desert. And that's where he was prepared. That was where he was shaped. That's where he was um, he was fashion shaped and prepared to be the voice of the Lord God and to be his hands and to be his feet and be, and God would demonstrate his power and his authority through him and Aaron. But it was predominantly through the hand of Moses. So I want to, I want you to get this picture though. Before the Redeemer came on the scene, while God was behind the scenes preparing the Redeemer to come on the scene, there was something absolutely atrocious going on in the land. There was something uh, sinister happening in the land, and it was the murdering of children. Okay, then I want to go, we're going to fast forward, and we're going to go to the New Testament. Now, the Bible says here, this is in Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 18. Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 18. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, notice the Redeemer was born in Bethlehem. It was in the days of Herod the king. Behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen a star in the east and have come to worship him. And when Herod the king had heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. Now, why was Herod troubled over the news of a child being born in uh, Bethlehem, and there's a supernatural event taking place in the heavens. Why? Because word got around through the prophets, come on, through Isaiah and through other prophets that a, come on, that the Redeemer, the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem and that there would be a sign. The, even these wise men understood this and this is why they went and they followed the sign. We followed, we talked about this in our last podcast about they, they saw this sign in the heaven, this consolation, this star, this mysterious uh, sign or omen or, uh, or event that took place that captured the event of a remnant group of individuals, howbeit it would be the kings, uh, these wise men would see this and that they followed this celestial sign in the heavens and it led them to, of course, Yeshua that was being born in Bethlehem. So when the news got back to Herod, the Bible says it troubled him. And it's interesting, it says, quote, so they said to him in Bethlehem, or I'm sorry, when he gathered all the chief priests and the scribes of the people together, he asked them where this Christ was to be born. And they said to him in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. So now they're quoting to him the words of the prophet, quote, but you Bethlehem in the land of Judah are not the least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. And then Herod, when he heard, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared, he sent them to Bethlehem and said, quote, go and search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, bring him back to me or bring word back to me that I may come and worship him also. Now listen, Herod had no desire to worship him as we would understand worship. He's not going there to do what the wise men do or what we would do or we would understand here, at least in our Western understanding of worship, to admonish him or to give him recognition or... Uh, or to uh, 
to administer, administer our worship to him, towards him as the Messiah. No, he wanted them to bring news back to him so that he could stop the fulfillment of what the prophet had said. Herod obviously didn't know the sovereignty and the authority and the power of the word and the, and the plan of God. And he was foolish enough to believe that he could stop the plans of God from being performed. No doubt he was being, uh, he was being influenced by Satan. Listen to this. Verse 9, when they heard the king, they departed, and behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense and myrrh and then being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod they departed for their own country another way so in other words if they for any if they for a moment doubted Herod's intention the Lord made sure to let them know that this was not a good plan this was not uh, in the best interest of the child so, uh, so this is interesting that he gave them a dream. He gave them a dream. Uh, and this dream, he warned them to take the young child and the mother and depart to Egypt. So the Bible says, listen to this. And, and was there until the death of Herod. So they came, they took the child and they hid until Herod died. Why? Because of their safety. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet saying, out of Egypt, I called my son. Now listen to this. And then Herod, when he saw that he was deceived by the wise men, was exceedingly angry and he sent forth and put to death, death all the male children who were in Bethlehem and in all its districts from two years old and under, according to the time which he had determined from the wise men. Interesting. So here we see the same thing being played out again. The same thing Pharaoh, watch this. There was a redeemer about to be raised up over the land of Egypt. Satan understood this because all it goes all the way back to the garden of eden he understood that he didn't know when it was going to happen but he understood but come on that out of the seed of the woman would come his demise so he inspired pharaoh to destroy come on to target the young male children or to target the children that's what i want to home in to target the children the infants so then we fast forward, we go all the way to the time. And here we have, an, again, another time frame of a redeemer being raised up. This time, it's not just a redeemer. It's the redeemer. It's the Messiah. It's the son of God, the son of man. And here we have Satan again. He inspires Herod. And he says, and he influences him to go and make a decree again to slaughter the children. And this was, this fulfilled what was spoken by Jeremiah saying, quote, a voice was heard in Ramah, lamenting, weeping, and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted because they are no more. Now, here again, what am I talking about? I'm talking about if, watch this in case you haven't caught on, if, again, Satan, the Bible says in the book of Revelation that his time, knowing that his time is short, he will come down with great wrath. This is mentioned in the book of Revelation. Again, Satan knows that he's on borrowed time. He knows he can't stop God from bringing about the fulfillment of the word and what he has already spoken. The Bible says heaven and earth 
shall pass away, but not one jot nor tittle of the word shall pass away until all things be fulfilled. So Satan, it's come on. Satan is not stupid enough to think that he can't prevent it, but he's trying to delay it. Let me say that again. Satan is not, come on, we got to give him more credit than that. He knows he can't stop the plan of God, but he's trying to delay the plan of God. So what did he do? He tried to delay it through Pharaoh. He tried to delay it through Herod. And I'm going to tell you something. I believe, I believe with all my heart that in 1973, through Roe versus Wade, which was a landmark decision in the U.S. Supreme Court that ruled that the Constitution of the U.S. protects a pregnant woman's liberty to choose and have an abortion without excessive government restriction. I believe that marked, I believe the enemy came in and he's already and he's working again behind the scenes. The Bible says we wrestle not get against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and rulers of darkness. So again, it is, it's, it's pretty evident to uh, to uh, imply here, and to believe that if we are near the appearance of the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. The Bible says in Luke 21, 28, when you begin to see all these things come to pass, look up and lift up your hands for your what? Your redemption is drawing near. Jesus said all these signs shall accompany the return of the Lord. So it's safe to say, my friends, that if we are truly in the end times, If we are truly in the last days, then there is going to be an even more greater level of onslaught. Now, I know, again, 1973, it's been over 40 going on 50 years in 2023. It'll be the 50-year mark of anniversary of Roe versus Wade. So we went a full generation of shedding innocent blood. At least here in the United States of America, our uh, th- there's blood on the hands of the United States of America, the shedding of innocent blood. It's gone on for 40 to 50 years now. Has there been consequences in judgment? I believe there has been selective judgment. Yes, I believe, and I don't have time to, to get into this in great detail, but I believe if you look back on disasters and you look back, look back on all kinds of things, I believe it is evident there has been selective judgment, but I believe we have seen an abundance of mercy on the part of God. But I'm going to tell you something, friends, as we come to the climax of the end of the dispensation, the grace, or you can call it the end of the church age, whatever you want to call it. But when that thing comes to an end and that thing comes to a climax and that thing comes to a close, I'm telling you, according to the word of God, according to the book of Revelation, it says there is a wine cup of the wrath of of the press of the wine cup press of the wrath of God, that when it becomes full, it will be poured out. And this is why I believe that we read about the events that take place in the book of Revelation. And that's why I believe it leads up to that. All everything that's happening is leading up to the fulfillment of what we read about in the book of Revelation, where God is going to pour out his wrath. Why? Because of the shedding of innocent blood. And it's not just, um, just the infants here, even though this is the premise of what we're talking about here today, or, or is the shedding of innocent blood, but it's also about the shedding of the blood of innocence regarding the prophets of God and the, the disciples and the brothers and sisters, those who have been martyred. The Bible's in the book of Revelation, it even says that those who will be slain and martyred will be crying out before the throne room of God and saying, Oh God, how long? How long until you avenge our blood? So friends, this thing is exhilarating. And I want to show you real quick. I'm not going to read all this for for sake of time tonight. But in the New Testament, when Jesus stood before trial before Pontius Pilate, and Pilate was trying to persuade the people because there was Jesus, Yeshua, and there was Barabbas. And it was a custom to release one prisoner. And Pilate tried to reason with the people to let Jesus go, for he was an innocent man. 
And the Bible says that the chief priests and the elders persuaded the multitudes that they should ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. So the governor answered and said to them, which of the two do you want me to release to you? And, and they, after being persuaded by the Pharisees and the elders and the priests, they said, give us Barabbas and Pilate. Pilate said unto them, what then shall I do with this Jesus who is called Christ? And they said unto him, let him be crucified. And the governor said, why? What evil has he done? But they cried out all the more, let him be crucified. Listen to this. And when Pilate saw that he could not prevail at all, but rather that atonement was rising, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. Are you listening today? You see to it. And the Bible says in verse 25, and all the people answered and said, let his blood be upon us and our children. And you know what? The blood of the innocent that they said, let his blood be upon us. Or in other words, let his charge of his blood of innocent be upon us and our children. Here's what's interesting. When you study the time frame of this, it was exactly one generation later that saw the destruction of Israel and they went into captivity and the temple was destroyed. So what happened? Judgment came upon the next generation. So just because it's been 40 years since Roe versus Wade and we've not seen a major, I mean, how, think about this, guys. How bad can it, I mean, how much more things can we see before people wake up? We've had 9-11. We've had wars. We've had disasters. We've had recessions. We've had, now we're in a plague. We, I mean, seriously, what? You know, if people think, and and I'm telling you, even, even people in the church will say, oh, no, 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 God doesn't judge today. That's not judgment. And they want to write off any notion that God could even judge under the New Testament. And again, before we close this broadcast, I want to remind you that in the New Testament, Jesus gave a, he said, woe unto Jerusalem. In the New Testament, he talks about your desolation would come, and it did come. He took he he rebuked three cities in the New Testament. Woe into you, Capernaum, woe into you, Chorazin, woe into you, Bethsaida. Three cities, and said the judgment that will come to you will be far greater than that of Sodom and Gomorrah, and it was under the new covenant. What about the book? What about what John the Revelator saw that we have not yet stepped into? The seals being broken, the bowls being poured out, hundred pound hailstones, cancerous sores falling on people, people being enslaved under a government of the Antichrist where they'll be forced to take a system in which they will not be able to buy, sell, or trade, heads being rolled, being beheaded for their testimony to Jesus. What about meteors striking the earth, turning waters into bitterness, into bitter waters? What about a pit opening up and scorpions, or what was described as scorpions, come out of this pit and torment men for so long. Guys, again, that's under the new covenant. New that's not Old Testament. So we, we've got to get our theology correct. We've got to get back in the word. And I'm telling you, I am just utterly just disgusted and disappointed at what is being taught and what is being preached by pulpits. It is cradling people into sleep, cradling people into apathy. And this is why we do what we do. So again, uh, let's, I want to recap this and close this tonight. When you begin to see a pattern that we saw under the rulership of Pharaoh and we saw in the time of Herod, if, if it's safe to say that right before God began to reveal a redeemer and a redeemer was going to come on the scene, that the enemy 
would bring an onslaught against our children, try to wipe them out through abortion, through drugs, through pornography, through apathy, through distractions, through this and through that. My friends, do you know what kind of suicide rate is happening right now? We're losing so many young people to suicide and depression. What's going on? The enemy knows his time is short and he is working overtime. Why? Because, come on, he, the oh, come on. He doesn't know the day nor the hour. The Bible says that not even Jesus himself does, nor the angels in heaven. So he don't know the day nor the hour, but he knows the times. He knows the seasons. He knows that his time is short. Why? Because he can read the writing on the wall. Listen, if Satan can read the writing on the wall, it's high time that us as believers begin to get our heads out of the sand and, and get back in the game and understand and recognize the times and seasons in which we're in. So what do we do, Brother Ricky? We Listen, we begin to intercede and we pray like never before over our children, over our sons, over our daughters. We bind the enemy off of them. We bind Satan off of them. We plead the blood of Jesus over them. We bind off devils and demons and warlocks and witches and assignments of hell that would try to en en enslave them and put them in bondage to drugs and alcohol and addictions and, 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 and pray that God would have mercy upon our nation. Now I know, listen, y'all get mad at me because and you can say it's unbelief or whatnot, but based on these patterns alone, this is why, and listen, I'm all about praying but I just don't see the court system overturning Roe versus Wade. And you say, well, Brother Ricky, that's that's so negative. That's where's your faith? Why couldn't God do that? Again, I, I am a man of prophecy. I am a, I'm a watchman. And again, as it, if Jesus said, as it were in the days of Noah and Lot, so shall it be in the return of the Son of Man. In other words, if we want to know what it's going to be like at the return of the Lord, we have to go back and see the patterns of the old. I'm telling you, friends, that's why I don't believe it's going to be overturned. If anything, it's going to become more wicked. It's going to become more dark. It's going to become more oppressive. And the times of the end and the signs of those and those things and those events are only going to accelerate and not diminish. I know this is contrary to what Christian television teaches you and what books are being written about and what workshops are being here and seminars and whatever that, you know, it's all about, you know, it's, it's just totally contrary to uh, in my opinion, what the Bible says about the end times. Um, uh, it's not to be negative. Our, listen, you say, where's your, where's our hope? My hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says he that has this hope purifies himself. It's time for us to get right. It's time for us to get ready so that we don't get left. That's my hope. My hope is that you'd hear this tonight. You'd heed the warning. You'd get oil back in your lamp trim your wick, get the fire burning back in your lamp so that you're not a foolish virgin. So that if the Lord returns this very night, that you are not left outside knocking on the door, trying to get in. And you hear the words of the Lord say, depart from me. I don't know you. That's my hope. My friends is to be watchful. And to be ready, for we know not the hour nor the day that our Lord shall return, but we prepare. We occupy till he comes. We keep praying. We keep interceding. We keep our we keep consecrating ourselves, setting ourselves apart, purifying ourselves, making ourselves ready, our garments white. And come on, the Bible says that he's coming back for a bride without spot nor wrinkle nor blemish. He's looking for that remnant that will be watching and ready so that we be not found naked and want at his return. Again, I hope, guys, that you've enjoyed these little segments uh, that, we, that, we, uh, that we do here uh, periodically like this throughout the week. And we want to give you some more information on how you can keep up with our ministry. Again, End Time Headlines. Dot org and time headlines.com you see uh, right there on your screen there's our main website in time headlines.org in time headlines.com instagram
Facebook, Twitter, Parler, MeWe, USA.Live. We're on all those platforms, every major social media platform out there. We're on them. Go find us. Follow us, keep up with our ministry. Again, if you've not yet downloaded our official ETH app, we want you to do that. Again, our app is available on Apple and it's available on Android. You can go right now when you get off this broadcast, get on the Apple store, get on the Android store. Uh, all you got to do is click, uh, just type in end time headlines. It's going to pop up. You're going to see right there in front of you our official trademark ETH logo. Download that app, get it free, sign up for push notifications so that you can be informed of all of our news and headlines from a prophetic perspective um, and our, our podcasts and whatnot that you can join. Uh, and you see, if you, if you look right there on your screen, see the bottom of the app right there, you can see home, browse, listen, watch, and donate. Let me tell you what that's about right there. So not only do you, you see the headlines there that you can scroll up and look and read, click on those and read those at will, but down there at the bottom where it says, listen with the little microphone icon, that's our podcast, or you can watch and you click on that's going to take you to our YouTube channel. That's going to have the graphics. Uh, the, the, uh, when we do videos, it's going to have like the PowerPoint, all that's going to be on there. So again, you can listen, you can watch, you can do all that right there. So Again, subscribe. We want you to go and subscribe. Get that digest. We talked about that at the beginning of this podcast, at least for our um, all of our Facebook listeners. Go on there. Click on the subscribe button so you can get that digest into your box uh, every single day, and it's going to keep you up and informed. Uh, again, if you've not yet, uh, if you're watching by Facebook or listening by YouTube, we do have a podcast, and it's available on Spotify and Apple. Uh, we do have podcasts available on Spotify and Apple. Again, go there, uh, find us. Just again, type in end time headlines. You're going to see our logo there. Uh, make sure you download that. You can listen while you're driving or work or whatnot. And I believe you'll be blessed by that. And as always, guys, we want to give you an opportunity. There's three different ways that you uh, can support our ministry. Or you can. There's three different uh, ways you can give. Um, right there on your screen, you, you, if you look to the left, if you have the app, just scroll all the way down into the bottom and you, to the right, right there where that little finger's pointing. If you're watching this and you see that heart right there where it says donate, click on that and you can give by the app and it's going to take you to a page you can give electronically or you can give going to the main website, endtimeheadlines.org. And you, when you go to the top, and you click the, uh, the, uh, the little menu bar, it's going to bring it down where you can see all that, and you'll see a place right there where you can donate. Click on that as well. Or you can give by check or money order, and you can make that out at End Time Headlines, P.O. Box 1391, Monroe, Georgia, 30655. Again, guys, uh, you can support our ministry by a one-time gift, or you can sign up, become a monthly partner. When you click on that to donate on either one of them, electronically, it's going to give you the option to give a one-time gift or you can give, uh, or you can become, you can sign up to become a monthly partner. So we appreciate, listen, all of our givers and supporters and partners of our ministry, a big shout out to you. We know who you are. Thank you for your support. Thank you for helping us remain strong. And to, we're almost about ready to wrap up 2020. And we want to go, uh, we want to continue to go on over into 2021, continue to remain strong, continue to remain a vital source of information, revelation, and equipping to uh, everyone, even outside the United States of America. Real quick, guys, before we close this broadcast today, uh, today's we're going to take off tomorrow. We're going to be back on here on Friday, but I am coming on as a special guest with my good friend, Jason Armstrong of Remnant Fire Ministries. Um, we're going to be on his program. I am, I will know tomorrow um, as, as of right now, I believe it's 1030 AM Eastern time, 1030 AM Eastern time is I believe the time that we're going to be coming on. I will share the link on our Facebook live uh, on our Facebook page, you guys on YouTube and all that, I want to try to get, uh, we will somehow get the video and we'll try to get that streamed over on podcast and on video as well. So we'll be able to do that as well. So just uh, be patient with us to get that up to you. So I'm excited about that. Uh, Jason and I are going to, on the program, we're going to just talk about different events 
Uh, it's kind of like a, just a casual uh, conversation type of uh, atmosphere and just talk about some of the times and seasons in which we're in. He's going to give some insights. I'm going to give some insights. We're just going to kind of hit it off with each other. Many of you guys uh, are very familiar with Jason. He's been on here many times. Also, I want to let you know we've got a, a schedule. If we're, we're going to try to work it in sometime soon, we're scheduled to come on with another good friend of mine, Ryan Johnson. We're going to be on his podcast as a guest as well. We just got to get that scheduled. And listen, guys, I'm excited. We've only got a few more months. When we get into the spring uh, and we transition into our new home, it's going to, I'm going to have my office. We're going to have our, it's going to all new look backgrounds going to be nice. We're going to have our podcast studio set up where you, you, you better get used to us having guests on. We're going to have guests on. It could be one guest, two, we could have three people on at a time. We're going to have round table discussions and topics. And it's going to be, I'm so excited about this. So uh, it's, I'm just trying to be patient hold off. And we got a little bit longer to do this. So again, it's all going to pay off. So that's what we got looking forward to in 2021, Lord willing. Um, I am very excited and looking forward to that. So guys, we're going to sign off for today. So God bless you. I pray the Lord keep you, bless you. May his countenance shine upon you and his favor be with you. May he bless you coming in and bless you going out. I pray his protection to keep you from any harm, danger, or any disabling accidents. And until we see you guys on Friday, God bless you. We'll see you. Thank you for listening to the End Time Headlines podcast. We pray that you've been blessed and equipped by today's message. For more information about how you can help partner with our ministry, please visit endtimeheadlines.org.